Sorry, this is not a YouTube video of how to blow things up in your home microwave. This is science. This is Bob Hubbard. I have a PhD in organic chemistry and have been working in the field of microwave chemistry for more than 15 years now. But microwaves and chemistry are two words most scientists would not even use in the same sentence. The science of microwaves has been fun to explore because of all the surprises I have found when microwaves are used as the heat source for chemical reactions. I'll be covering what I call collision kinetics and other unusual properties, such as low temperature curing, bulk heating, some very unique chemistry, and the greener nature of microwaves. Of course, the first questions about microwaves are, don't metals arc? And doesn't it have hot and cold spots? There's now technology to avoid those issues, described in part five of this five-part series. But first, let's understand the basic science. Heat is the result of the movement of molecules. An oven creates hot air molecules to transfer their energy to food, for example. Hot liquids, like solvents, are often used by chemists to provide the energy to enable chemical reactions. Electromagnetic fields can also be used to enable chemical reactions, and that's where we go next. The electromagnetic spectrum is kind of divided by the visible light band into high frequency and low frequency energies. This is important when we consider what happens to molecular bonds of shared electrons when they are exposed to these energies. High frequency energy will drive atoms apart by separating these electrons into free radicals or by ionization. The lower frequency fields only cause molecules to be heated. Let's take a look at the infrared and microwave frequency bands. Infrared energy causes bonds to bend and stretch, but not break. Because the infrared wavelength is short, the energy only penetrates materials shallowly. Microwave energy causes whole molecules to rotate, but not break. Because the microwave wavelength is longer, the energy penetrates materials deeply. This seems counterintuitive since a higher frequency seems like it should penetrate more, not less. Here's some information about nitrogen gas. The electrons are pretty evenly spread around, as you can see. Oxygen looks about the same. Unlike air, which is mostly nitrogen and oxygen, Water has a strong permanent dipole and is very polarizable. Microwave energy is usually described as increasing the polarization of polarizable molecules, like water. Notice that it isn't just water that heats in our microwave ovens, but food molecules too, because they have lots of permanent dipoles. Remember this point because we will have a rather large surprise with this later. Finally, we get to talk about chemical reactions. Microwave chemistry is so easy. Just throw some chemicals together that you know will react and bingo, instant results. Of course, if they're both solids, you'll have to use a solvent or blend them with something. Lots of spinning molecules are bound to collide, and if possible, they chemically react. As things get bigger and they slow down a little, they keep on spinning and reacting. And that brings us to just why microwaves heat things so quickly. More basic chemistry. There are two parts to the study of chemical reaction energies. With thermodynamics, one can calculate the difference between the energy of the starting materials and the energy of the products. Kinetics describes the reaction mechanism, how A and B combine to form C. Reactions usually need activation energy of some kind to get started, for example, by adding a catalyst. Just like adding alcohol usually increases the energy of a party. Is energy of activation the key to microwaves? Well, probably not. 
Here's the famous kinetics equation of Savante Arrhenius of 1889. But it appears that this kinetics equation only has thermodynamics factors in it. The rate equation normally includes a reaction constant A. For any particular reaction with normal heating, A does not change. It's constant. But A has two factors buried inside, zeta and rho. These factors are not affected by normal heating, but if you can increase the collision frequency, you increase the reaction rate. And if you have more collisions, you also have a higher likelihood of the molecules being in just the right orientation to react. The steric factor rho. And that is the obvious reason microwaves increase reaction rates. So how fast are we talking here? 10 to 50 times faster. 10 to 50 times. But stay tuned because there's much more weirdness to come. Check out part two.